What comes to your mind when I say film? A physical roll of tape filled with sprocket holes on both sides? An analog way to capture images in a digital era? Maybe a particular stock of film? For me, it's the look and feel of the 80s and 90s cinema. Works such as Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Pulp Fiction and Terminator have set standards for me on how to tell a simple story in an engaging way and how to immerse the viewer into the world on screen from the first seconds of the sequence. In every aspect of my work, since I started digital photography three years ago, I've been conscious of the images I saw as a kid countless times in movie theaters and on TV. After finally getting into film photography earlier this year, a new stage of the pursuit to replicate the look of my favorite movies has begun. Keep the highlights roll off soft and adjust the gamma as if the raw file was a film negative overexposed one stop. Keep the colors saturated, but make sure they are not getting separated too much and blend nicely. And just before you're done, don't forget to add some grain to the image. And that's when I discovered Dehancer. Welcome back, friend. We're talking Dehancer again. And this time it's the plugin for DaVinci Resolve. Just like in my previous video on Dehancer, this is gonna be an advanced tutorial. And if you wanna know uh, what all the individual tools and tabs in the Dehancer plugin do, I recommend that you check out the official website. They have great tutorials explaining all of that. And what we're gonna do today is I will uh, share not necessarily my usual workflow with the Dehancer plugin, but just a fun one I created while trying to match the look of a 1985 movie by Akira Kurosawa called Run. So we're gonna have a small theory lesson and the drawing board, and then we're gonna go into DaVinci Resolve and see how much we can do with just a single Dehancer plugin, how close we can match the look of the movie. So let's get started. Before we go into DaVinci Resolve, let me give you a little explanation on the drawing board of my thought process uh, when I was developing, when I was matching the look of this movie. So, in case of film, we're gonna have luminosity, or contrast, and color. Today, I'm gonna spend most time matching the contrast. We have zero at the bottom and 100 at the top. 100 is the white point, the brightest part of the image, and zero is the black point, the darkest part of the image. So, right here at the bottom, we have a very hard ground. And things that get crushed into this hard ground, especially in the case of color negative film, are gonna get destroyed, completely destroyed, you're gonna lose all the detail and there's nothing that can be done to recover it. But at the top, in the brightest part of the image, in the highlights, we have a wonderful tool called Film Compress. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna compress our image uh, and, and things that would normally go to 100, that would blow out, that would go pure white, it will bring them down to maybe something like 95. So we're gonna get a lot more dynamic range from our image without losing too much contrast or getting weird uh, artifacts from local contrast adjustments. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get our image and bring it up to smash it against this film compression uh, wall, a soft wall in this case. And we're gonna do that using gamma adjustment and white point adjustment. And then after it's been done, after we got all the dynamic range we want from our image using the film compression tool, we're gonna bring it back down into the normal uh, luminosity values using the print exposure slider. Developing this workflow was a lot of fun, I have to say. This is not what you would normally do in any other tool in DaVinci Resolve, I think. Maybe you would do something similar with a sequence of notes where you brighten the image at the start, do something to it later, and then darken it again at the end. But in a single plugin, this is this workflow is not what you do. This looks contradictory and weird, but in my case it worked surprisingly well. 
And I guess it makes sense because in the film days, what you would do is you would overexpose the negative to get the most detail out of the shadow areas and then uh, reduce the development time or maybe darken the image when you print it. So let me go into DaVinci Resolve and explain how we're actually gonna implement this scheme in the Dehancer plugin. First of all, let me show you a couple of still images from the movie Run, the look of which we are replicating. Uh, in the highlights, as you can see, uh, the white point, first of all, the white point is way down. Uh, in my edits, I will set the white point at white 100, but as you can see here, uh, we have all the details in the clouds, uh, nothing is blown out. And especially as you can see here in the specular highlight, even though it is pure white, it is not uh, hitting 100 on the luminosity scale. And in the shadows, things, again, things are not really hitting the, the hard floor, the zero. Uh, they're just going muddy and we are gradually losing details in the shadows. And But even though we don't have the white point and the black point, at 100 and 0 respectively. We still have very good contrast. The image doesn't look faded in any way. Now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, uh, I have a couple of clips. Here uh, I think I will work on this one. These are Canon RAW uh, movies or Canon R5 for RAW movie format, whatever it's called. I work, uh, I develop them in Lock 2 and can in C Lock 2, then bring that into DaVinci Intermediate, work uh, in the Hanser, and after I'm done in the Hanser, I transform those these clips into the output color space, which is Rec 709. First thing I recommend you do in the Hanser is set film gray, inhalation, and bloom to whatever preset you like or create your own, because uh, if you don't do that. Uh, and turn, for example, the film grain as the less depreciated in process, uh, it will alter it, alter the contrast a little bit, and I don't want to go back and have to edit and have to tweak contrast multiple times. So now that we have these on, next step is to select uh, the film profile and the rint film profile. I'm using the both our Fuji stocks. The original image, as you can see, it is somewhat greenish. The, we have warm highlights. The shadows actually somewhat warm too. There is a little bit of a blue color cast, but the image is warm overall and towards the, the green side. So that's why I'm going to use uh, the Fuji film stocks. I'm going to leave uh, these values uh, where they are now. Uh, for now, I will be, as my last step, I will be pulling the exposure down here and it does what you would expect it to do is just makes the image darker overall. The next step is to go into the film compression tab and as you can see we already have on the highlights pretty way high up. They're not blowing out just yet uh, but enabling the film compression, I tweaked it a little bit already, enabling the film compression will bring our highlights uh, down. I want to affect only the highlights, so the tonal range is very narrow. Next uh, thing is I go into Film Developer. Uh, let me reset these. What we're going to do is we're going to push the image even higher using the, the gamma correction. So we turn the gamma correction all the way to the right and uh, adjust the contrast. As you can see in the shadows, we are getting much more detail and in the highlights we are still not blowing anything out thanks to the film compression. So this is what we started with and here's what we've got so far. As you can see the image got a lot brighter overall and we're gonna counteract that by pulling the exposure down in the print tab. We are not really losing detail on the darker areas but we want to make that even softer. As you can see here, this is probably as dark as uh, the image gets in this movie. Uh, so compared to what we have right here, it's actually pretty close. But I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna 
adjust the black point a little bit. I do want to make the image even brighter in terms of highlights and uh, the black point I'm bringing that up as well so we don't lose any detail we have a smooth transition into the black area and nothing is really going uh, nothing is getting crushed and going pure black now our image uh, is even brighter it got brighter again so we gonna pull down the exposure in the print tab even further in our reference image the white point is way down as you remember I don't think I'm gonna be able to achieve that uh, because if I pull the white point down we will lose too much contrast so I'm just gonna keep it at the top for this particular tutorial let's pull the exposure down even further to minus two stops and this is looking pretty good now let's work on color in our reference image as you remember we have uh, somewhat greenish tint over the whole image the highlights are warm the shadows are clean maybe a little bit towards the blue and the thing that stands out mo the most about this image is the lush greens we have right here here we have a they're going a little bit warmer but still this tree is very green very saturated again uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to achieve that using just one just a single enhancer plugin but I will see how close I can get so the first thing I'm gonna do is warm up the image by pulling down the target white as you can see we warmed up uh, the image and the highlights are looking very close to what we get what we have in our reference uh, image now the last thing we have to do is to get rid of the magenta color cast uh, shift our image towards cyan and that's pretty much it so let's start by adjusting the cyan red slider it's looking pretty good warm the image back up a little bit this is close this is we're getting pretty close now we have to address the shadows they're a little bit too cool highlights are looking pretty good still have mid-tones maybe back this towards blue a little bit more I think we are pretty close now the greens uh, I wasn't able to get the greens to match these greens we have in our reference pictures so we're gonna stop right here obviously you can tweak this image further I would probably uh, work on the greens uh, I would add a, a normal node before the enhancer plugin uh, just the hue versus hue curves but my goal here was to show how far or how close to an actual cinema shot on film you can get using by by using just a single dehancer plugin and it's amazing how good it worked so that's gonna be it for this tutorial and again the dehancer plugin for DaVinci Resolve just like the version for Capture One which I originally came across it's super fun to use I like the results I like the process recommend you check it out for yourself they have a free demo and if you like it don't forget to use my code Igor and VKV at checkout for a 10% off. Until next time, see you. Cheers.